I've, I've just had an inspiring day and been on an amazing journey today, so I hope you have as well. I hope also that I can continue this journey for you. And I want to continue it in a way that we talk about reading and how reading can help explore and create a better understanding, especially with young people and young minds. Because after all, they're our future generations and we want to celebrate them and, um, and applaud them. Thanks, I'm Sally Webster. Now, do you um, get inspired by reading? Do you get inspired by, by reading novels about places, destinations, locations, about history, about culture? Put up your hands if you do. Put up your hands. <laughs> well, that's pretty fantastic. <laughs> now, if reading those novels or reading any books about a place, a destination, a culture, that inspires you to actually learn more about the place, about the people, and it might even actually inspire you to go on a journey a journey either in your imagination or a journey to the location itself. Now, if that happens after you've read these, these books, smile if, if you feel that way. Smile, if, yep, smile big and wide, yeah. Look around, everyone's smiling. That is just fantastic. Now, I bet when you were thinking about that, you might have been thinking about a place that was special to you, perhaps even your passion place. Well, my passion place is Barcelona. And it was in Barcelona that made me think, why am I so dedicated? Why am I so enthusiastic to encourage everyone, to encourage all people to actually understand and learn about a different culture and to learn about others and a different place and learn about them through the history and, as I said, the cultural and the heritage. And the reason it was, being, it was in Barcelona, because I've, I've travelled to Barcelona many times and I was looking at what was available there for the tourists, which families are one of the biggest um, travellers in the world or travel cohorts in the world. And in Barcelona, where there's approximately about 10 million visitors or tourists a year, families, along with business travel, are the big, biggest cohorts. And I looked around on one of the trips that I was there to see, OK, what was available for, for the families, for the young travellers who were travelling there. That's the sort of... Uh, the the tween market, the 8 to 14 year olds, or the teenagers, the eight, um, 14 to 18 year olds, 14 to 19 year olds. And I saw that there was a lot of information available in the picture book market, and maybe not a lot, but there was a substantial amount. And then there was also information and books available for adults. But there wasn't much available for this, these two groups in between. And yet, they were in Barcelona and they're also in other locations and they're travelling because families are one of the biggest um, um, travel cohorts. So it made me realise, why was it special for me um, throughout my life? Why did I want to learn about other cultures and other destinations? And why did I want to communicate it, as I was saying before? But what, what wasn't existing there in Barcelona and also in other locations? And I realised, though, for me, it came from this book. It's written by Thela C, who happens to be Dr. Seuss. And Come Over to My House is a book that's narrated by a young English-speaking boy. And he travels the globe and he goes from country to country throughout Asia, throughout the Middle East, throughout Europe, the Americas, North and South, um, Britain. He even comes to Australia. And the thing that is fantastic about this book and that, that inspired me so much as a young person and a young reader was that he had this curiosity, something that we've actually heard so much about today. He was inquisitive and he asked lots of questions and he wanted to know more about the culture and history and the places that he was travelling to. And because he was inquisitive and curious, people were opening up their doors. They were welcoming, welcoming him. They were thanking him for wanting to know more about their culture and their history. And also, he was just wanting to know how different it was to his own experiences. This also made it special for me because I would sit on the, my lounge room floor, go through this book with a huge, you know, this big of course it was to me at the time, Reader's Digest Atlas and go page by page with my grandfather. And sit on the floor and we had to do that on the lounge room floor because this Reader's Digest Atlas was too big for me to handle on the table. 
And that was also special because I was doing this journey and going through this with my grandfather. And we'd go pay by, page by page in this book and I'd map out all the locations on the atlas and actually draw on the atlas and say, OK, I'm going to travel here and travel there and I want to learn about these people and I want to learn about that there. And so we were sharing this experience as a family. Similar to as many tourists now are experiencing as a family. More and more families are travelling. So, of course, with me, all roads lead back to Barcelona. And again, on another trip, so I was thinking about, you know, what was it that inspired young people um, to, to travel, but also what was available. And this led me to go on my own journey and undertake my PhD in communication on this very subject. And in Barcelona, I surveyed um, a number of... There was 25 um, young travellers with their families. And it was a quality of survey. I was asking them questions about what inspired them, what motivated them to travel, if the young people had influence on where the families were going to travel, on their selection for destinations. Also, was any of the information that they'd actually read before they got to the location, which was Barcelona, did that actually help and enrich their experience? And the 25 that I interviewed, which came from oh, a range of different countries, so that it was Britain, Europe, um, America, um, Asia, even Australia, 24 of them said yes, they'd done some reading and research before they got to, to um, Barcelona. And they all said that this in enhanced their experience there. It enabled them to actually understand the, the culture and what was on offer there. And it also helped to understand the people more. But what they were saying was that there wasn't a lot actually written for, for them that engaged them and in their language, for, written for young people. And they were after this. So most of the information they got was through the internet, through friends at school that had already travelled to Barcelona and would come back um, to their home and talk about it. They also got information from school through geography and history. But they were really after information that spoke to them and engaged them. So not even the internet was doing that for them. And yet the parents were saying that they could find some books that were about Barcelona and the Catalan culture and they would then translate this to, to their children. And they knew that and they said that this little bit of research that they'd done was enhancing their experience. As I said, that was 24. One young boy from Singapore said he was having the most miserable time. Now, if you've been to Barcelona, you might find that very hard to believe that you could have such a miserable time. But he was, and he couldn't believe that the, the culture in, in the Catalan culture in Barcelona was so distinct and different to his own culture in Singapore. He hadn't done any research or any homework. And he knew, and he offered this, I didn't influence him, he offered this and said that he knew if he had, his experience would be much happier in Barcelona. And he knew that because the family had gone um, on their previous holiday to Australia and he had done some homework. He talked to um, friends that were from Australia. He also spoke to many friends that had been to Australia. He did um, search the internet and he also studied it in classes. But like he said there again, there was not much available that were written in his language that engaged him as a young person. And for this reason, he, he said that's why he didn't actually do any homework on Barcelona because he couldn't find anything that actually engaged him. He said he'd never do this again though, that he, in the future he would always make sure that he'd done some sort of homework before because he didn't want to have the miserable time. So then this led me back to the ACT here in Canberra and to actually survey um, young school students, um, 13, 14. Again, a qualitative survey. And I was expecting to survey between about 15 and 20 at a public and a private school. And I wanted to know what it was that they wanted to read, what it was that, that they were reading that might encourage them to go on a journey and to learn about other cultures. And would they be motivated even more if they, want, if they read something and it would inspire them to go on a journey to travel as the current tourist and also as the future tourist? What was amazing about this survey was the, the response. I was expecting about 15 to 20 people, as I said, from each school, but there was over 150 respondents. 
The teachers said that the students were so enthused to do it, they wanted their voices to be heard. They were actually wanting to undertake this survey and they wanted to participate in this because they wanted this information. They want to read, which I could say is a fantastic thing. We should be celebrating this, that young people are wanting to read. They also wanted to learn more and engage and maybe even do some homework through the internet, etc. But they weren't finding this information unless it was in the fantasy realms of Twilight or Harry Potter. So that's why they were so enthusiastic to do this survey, because they wanted their voices to be heard. So what does this say? I, I really propose that what we should be doing is developing a new literary genre, that is travel novels for young readers or travel guides in a story. Because the young people are saying they want this, they want to read. They want to read about other places, cultures and, and destinations. They are motivated by it. They are the current tourists. They've got the spending power, it's called pester power. <laughs> <laughs> and that you know, for some reason, it's, it's almost being ignored by the publishing industry and by the tourism industry. Less so with the marketing, marketing industry in other consumer based, but certainly in the tourist side. So I'm not sure why they're ignoring it when they are the current tourists. Also, what they're reading now influences them for what they're going to want to explore as adults. So they might either travel um, to the location as an adult or they may be just having better cultural understanding. Surely this is something that we need to actually consider with the publishing industry and the tourism industry and encourage some sort of marketing strategy. So, this is where you guys come in. It's TED. So why don't we start a people campaign? If young people are asking for it, and there's young people in the ACT that are asking for it, so you've got some responsibility to them as well. But right around the world that people, the young people are asking for it, the families are asking for it. And when they're not actually asking for anything bad. It's, it's about promoting cultural understanding and empathy and learning and reading. So I suggest that if you've got young children um, in those age groups of the tweens and teenagers, put pressure on the schools. Get the schools to put pressure on the publishing industry. Put, get the schools to put in the curriculum into their libraries. Go to bookshops and demand it. I know that there's many bookshops here in Canberra that are already saying that families are demanding, but make them actually contact the publishing industry. Next time you book a, fa a, a family holiday, you know, put it on the travel agents, put pressure on the tourism industry. And why not encourage any young person you know to start writing and blogging about their experiences and their journeys. Start the social networking and from, from young voices so that they can actually hear from each other as well. And that there's an opportunity for them to actually engage and explore and learn from the young voices. Because why is this important? It's important because through reading we learn about each other. We learn cultural understanding, cultural empathy. We also learn to go on a journey and explore. It, it, it's about the curiosity that we've discussed today. It's about inquisitiveness and it's encouraging young minds to actually think and explore and learn about other people. Surely, if they're the current tourists, it's something that we should be celebrating and applauding. We want more books like this one this Dr. Seuss, come over to my house, so that people, other young people can be like me and inspired and want more people to share and engage and learn about each other. Because really through reading we can also, we learn about the culture but we can also celebrate our understanding of each other, demonstrate cultural empathy and also compassion. Because after all, these young tourists, who are the current and the future tourists, they're also our future, our future leaders. So thanks for listening, because this is my bid for world peace. Thank you.